I've recently updated my phone to the iOS 14.3 Public Beta 3, and with that comes the ability to take photos in the new Apple Pro Raw format. Raw photos are essentially the data that the camera sensor captures in a raw, uncompressed format, giving you as much information as possible to then edit the image from. Smartphones have had the ability to shoot raw photos for a while now, but with the introduction of Apple Pro Raw on the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, Apple Pro Raw aims to simplify and enhance the raw image editing workflow. Apple says Pro Raw gives you all the standard raw information along with the Apple image pipeline data, so you can get a head start on editing with noise reduction and multi-frame exposure adjustments already in place and have more time to tweak color and white balance. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at Apple's new Pro Raw and how it compares to a traditional raw file that we've been able to capture on iPhones for years using apps like Halide or Lightroom Mobile. So let's have a look at the test scene I've set up to capture some images. Okay, so this is a quick run through of the scene that I've got set up. So we've got the Aperture 120D Mark II and that's at 100% power. We've got that boomed overhead through a standard reflector. Now that puts out a lot of light and that'll ensure the iPhone is using the lowest ISO as possible. We'll zoom in a bit here and you can see we've got the one by camera selected and on the phone, on the this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Apple says that's the best camera and sort of the biggest sensor on the phone itself. Now that's mounted on the Joby Gorillapod. If you want to pick one of these up, there's a link in the description of where to grab that. And I'll be using this little remote wireless remote to take the images itself so I don't move the camera. Now as for the scene itself, we've got a plant, a glass of water and an Apple Watch just as some everyday items. I've got the black lens cloth there and that gives us nice deep shadows to have a look at. Now over here, we've got the color checker. That gives us some color accuracy and white balance. And I've also got the HomePod Mini, something white in the scene. And then we've got $50 redos because there's a lot of detailing in the $50 note here. And that gives us a look at the sharpening and overall detail in the image. And then finally, we've got these little white labels that I've got. And that's just for me to swap out so I can remember which image was taken from which app. So that's a quick look at the scene. Now I'll grab some test shots and then we'll jump onto the computer and have a look at the images in a bit closer detail. Now I just thought I'd show you quickly, these are the settings that I've got for the Alide app. You can see down here possibly it's got raw selected. Uh, and then the same if I uh, maybe swipe across, this is when I use the Lightroom app. I just left everything in auto and let the app decide what the settings were that were best for it because with the Apple camera app, we actually don't have a choice in the settings. So I thought that was the fairest way to do it. And you can see here we've got the toggle for raw. You can turn that to no raw. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Bridge and you can see we've got four images here. All up. Now this first one is the HEIC file. You can see down here it's 2.47 meg versus the Apple Pro Raw, 26.75. Then an image from Halide in Raw, 10.2, and Lightroom Raw, 10.83. So you can see file sizes definitely vary between the Halide Lightroom Raw compared to the Apple Pro Raw. And as per Apple's specs, the Pro Raw is about 10 times the size of the JPEG file. So we'll open these up and first of all we'll clear all the settings, open them up and we'll have a look. So we've got our four files here. First thing I'm going to do is just hit auto on all of these just to try and make them look a little bit prettier. So that and that looks about the same. I'll hit same on auto on this. Uh, you can see the Pro Raw is a little bit darker so we'll bring the exposure up just to try and more closely match the others. And we'll leave the JPEG as is for now. So they're all quite consistent exposure wise now, which is a good base to work from. Now I've already had a look at these files and, and one thing that I've really noticed is shadow detail in the Pro Raw compared to the Halide Raw and JPEG, uh, Halide Raw and Lightroom, sorry. So if we come in here to the shadows in here, that looks really dark, but this is the Pro Raw file. If we bring the shadows up, you can see it pretty clean shadows in there. It actually looks pretty nice. And now if we jump over to the Halide image, and do the same. Look at all that noise you see straight in the shadows there. Now you could use some noise reduction to take that away, but just comparing uh, same like for like at the moment, you can really see that the Apple computational processing that it does in this Pro Raw files really gives you some cleaner shadows there to work with. And I still think you have plenty of detail here versus the Halide image here. 
Now the Lightroom image is basically the exact same as the Halide image, there's next to no difference in that. So probably for the rest of this example, we may even just ignore Lightroom because the file is pretty much exactly the same as Halide. Now down here, I left this in here as a good way to show some deep shadows. Um, so you can see here on the Halide image, we've got quite a bit of noise, quite a bit of grain in here. We've even got some color artifacting, which is quite interesting. We'll come back to the Pro Raw. You can see you lose all that color artifacting and you also lose a lot of that grain that was in there that was visible in the Halide image. Uh, and then one other place that the shadows are quite interesting is over here. This isn't really a deep dark shadow or anything. That's quite smooth. Then you come to this image the halide image and you can see there's definitely a lot more grain in that. Now these raw files as standard, they have sharpening and noise, color noise reduction applied. This is the halide image and also the pro raw, they both have the exact same settings applied. So in the halide image we could go in, bring in some noise reduction and tweak that to get rid of that. But you don't need to do that quite as much on the pro raw file which is Basically, it can save you a bit of time in, in editing and, and processing to get an image out, a clean image out quicker than you would otherwise. And just for reference, if we bring up the JPEG image here, it's all very dark under there. We'll come back here, raise these shadows right up. You can see it just looked pretty ordinary. There's no way to really fix that artifacting there without sort of doing some serious work. And same again up here in the shadows, quite noisy, quite artifacting, pretty, pretty ordinary overall. So definitely raw wins either or. Either raw file is definitely going to be cleaner with a bit more work from the halide image versus the pro raw, but they're going to be better either way than the JPEG. Okay, so we'll reset the images again, clear settings, then open them up, and this time we'll have a look at some detail. And sometimes the pro raw seems to over sharpen images and you can't quite tone that back. But um, I think with this beta 3, you actually have a little bit more control over it. So. We've got the JPEG image, the Apple Pro Raw, we'll just hit auto just to bring up exposure. Same as the Halide image and Lightroom, they'll look the same because they basically are the same file. And then we'll bring this one up a little bit exposure wise just to more closely match the others. Now detail wise, if we come in and for example, we'll just look at these lines at the top of this color chart. This is a Pro Raw file, you can see it's actually quite sharp already um, as standard. It applies some sharpening and noise reduction here. All the files, all the raw files do the same thing. So that's nothing different that Apple's doing there. But you can see here the Halide image is definitely not as sharp as the Pro Raw. But then if you go Pro, Pro Raw and take that sharpening out, it looks a little bit closer, but then you can also take the sharpening out of the Halide image to make it even softer again if you wanted to. So I think if you really want full control over sharpening, Halide is potentially the better app to use over Pro Raw uh, because you just can't quite remove all the sharpening that the Apple uh, Pro Raw is applying. So that's the same down here. If we look at the Australia sign here, the contrast and, and sharpening on that versus the Halide image, you can definitely see it's a little bit softer. Um, so it gives you a bit more control. So the default is 40 on that, which is about the same as the Pro Raw image without sharpening. They're quite similar there. This might be a bit hard to see on YouTube, so um, if you do want to get a hold of these files, there'll be a link in the description of where to download them, and you can have a play with them and have a look for yourself in, in closer detail. So in this example, we'll have a look at color. So we'll go here, we'll clear all previous settings, and then we'll open these files up again. And we'll just hit auto on these three raw files here. And again, Pro Raw seems to be a little bit darker, so we'll bring the exposure up on that. Somewhere around that looks pretty similar. Looking at the histogram up here, they're quite similar exposure overall. Now first up, we'll zoom in here on the white balance chips, and we'll just select this middle square here for our white balance, gives us a nice 4900 Kelvin temperature. We'll do the same for the other two raw files. And I can set the white balance on the JPEG as well. Uh, just shifts that just a little bit there. So now this will be a little bit extreme, but we'll come down here and we'll go Vibrance Max and Saturation Max. Now this looks a bit ridiculous, but bear with me for a second. So now we're looking at the Halide image here and pay particular attention to the blues and the purples here. So this is Halide versus Pro Raw. You can see the shift in the blues and the purples is actually quite interesting. The Pro Raw, First Halide, 
Pro Raw. First halide. And that's also visible up here on these, these chips as well. You can see the shift seems to be around these colors here, which I don't know why. Maybe you can explain why. If you, if you know why, let me know in the comments. As you can see from this example, Apple Pro RAW really does give you the advantages of the iPhone's image processing combined with the usual benefits of a RAW photo. And if you will prefer a completely RAW image, you can always continue shooting with an app like Halide or Lightroom to capture that for you. Although Apple has said they are developing an API to allow third-party apps to capture Pro RAW files too. Let me know below if you think Pro RAW benefits are worth it for you. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my somewhat unscientific take on Apple Pro Raw vs Raw. As always, if you have any comments, leave them below and I'll get back to you. If you did find this video helpful and would like to see more, click subscribe and give it a thumbs up as this really helps the channel grow and I'll see you in the next one.